Happy Food Literacy Month and welcome to our recipe for the day. We are making a spiced corn and plum prana salad. It is so delicious and it's just using the best of the fruits and vegetables that sort of transition us from summer into fall. And here in California, we have so much that is ripe right now and so much that is delicious. So I hope that you'll enjoy this recipe. It's actually inspired by a conversation I had with some colleagues in India. And we were talking about the foods that are ripe in India right now and what's ripe here. And we found that there are quite a few similarities, including the plum. And I happen to have a pluot tree and that's how this recipe came together. I was researching um, the uses for plums in India and they're often used in a chutney recipe and a chutney is an Indian condiment. Um, it's a little bit sweet, a little bit spicy, a little bit hot, um, and it's got just tons of flavors. And so I thought, what if I took those same spices and seasonings and put them into a fresh salad rather than um, doing something on the stove top because it's still hot here in California. So that is where this recipe uh, came from and I hope that you enjoy it. It's, it's a lot of fun. So first we're going to make this spice base. Um, and we use so many fun flavors that hopefully you'll learn a new favorite spice while you're cooking this. So um, what we are going to do is we're going to put all of the spices for this recipe in something called a mortar and pestle. So maybe you have seen one of these before. Uh, we have a couple different kinds here at work, but um, you know, so this one's just made out of ceramic. Um, and this one is my personal one from home. And this is actually made out of stone. Uh, and so you can, it's very, very heavy. You can hear that. So, um, and essentially what you do in a mortar and pestle is you grind things together. So I'm gonna put all of my ingredients into the bowl. Um, and then I'm gonna use this sort of mallet, the, the pestle, and I'm going to, um, grind our spices fresh so that they're kind of like sticking them into a coffee grinder. This is way more fun for kids. So um, let's start with those spices. We're going to take, uh, oh, and I should mention that you can get all of our recipes at foodliteracycenter.org slash recipes. So um, we have the recipe for the spice mix here. It's called a prana spice mix that we created. And so the first ingredient is ginger. Um, I love Oh, it's just so fruity and floral and it's it's everything. Ginger is, it's spicy but sweet. Um, ginger is amazing. And I'll show you how to peel it. You're gonna take a spoon because it's got this uh, very thin paper-like skin on it. And all you need is a plain spoon and you just scrape the spoon and hopefully you can see that the skin will just fall right off. Um, it's really easy to peel ginger. So um, if I were if I were cooking with this, like gonna cook it and throw it into something hot or even bake it, um, I wouldn't worry about the the paint. It's so thin you don't really notice it's there. Um, but it you know it doesn't have any flavor, so that's why I'm taking it off because I'm making a spice mix and I want it as flavorful as humanly possible. So I am gonna scrape off that outer, it's kind of a, you know, underwhelming uh, skin there. So I'm gonna just get rid of that. And I only need about an inch of um, the ginger, so I'm just gonna chop that off with my knife and look at how much ginger I have left. This will last you, you know, well, depending on how you use it, we have some people on staff that's only a day's worth right there. Uh, but uh, it could last you a couple of weeks, um, depending on how much you cook with it. All right, that's fully peeled. So now I'm just gonna um, chop it a little bit. So that, that would be a lot for me to um, grind into a paste. So I'm gonna just chop it real fine um, and drop that into my, into my mortar and pestle. Then we want a quarter teaspoon of each of the spices except for mustard seed. I'm using the most of that. I really 
think that um, the mustard makes this dish pop. So we're using a half teaspoon of the mustard seed. Um, and you know, you're gonna use those whole seeds. They're, they're so tiny. I don't know if you can even see them. Uh, but they just are like little dots of joy. So we'll put all the mustard seed and then fennel. Fennel seed is another amazing spice. I don't know if you can really see these. Um, they're so tiny, but um, they actually grow wild along the river here in Sacramento, California. And you can smell them as you're taking a walk or going for a run along the river. They're kind of licorice-y. Um, it's an amazing flavor. Um, and if you've never cooked with it, often um, I like to put it in marinara sauce, for example. So there's all kinds of fun uses for fennel. Um, fenugreek is another fun one that we're gonna use in our recipe. And oh, I can smell it all the way. My hand is away from me and I can smell it. That is how strong. It's almost uh, caramely, uh, like a, a, a deep caramel uh, sort of a flavor. Uh, then we're also gonna use cumin seed that has a bit of a smoky flavor. So as you can see, we're putting all kinds of interesting flavors that you might not think to put together all in the same spice recipe. And then we're going to put um, some peppercorns in there. And finally, the last spice we will use is whole cloves. And we're going to use just two of those, but you could put in a little extra if you like that. It's uh, again, it, it pairs so well with that ginger because it's got that really big bite of flavor, kind of spicy. Uh, but in this really fun way, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and put three in there, and that tastes so good with the plum or in my case the pluot. Okay, so we've piled everything into our mortar and pestle, and then kids, you are just oh, did you see my uh, my clove hopped? He hopped out of there. So you're just gonna pound, you can really smash it, kind of fun, and you will start to smell those spices instantly. Just use your, use your strength, pound it, grind it against the sides. You're gonna use all kinds of methods and this will take you a while. You could, you, again, you could put this like in the bottom of your blender, but there's so little of it. Why get the whole blender out and get it dirty? That's why I'm using a mortar and pestle. Also, it's just way more fun. And you're just gonna smash, you're gonna pound, you're gonna swirl all the different all the different techniques and you'll do that for like five minutes oh it smells so good and you can see it's already beginning to turn into kind of almost like a paste so you'll break down all of those whole spices and you'll end up with kind of a paste so it'll look like this and i just put it in a spice jar in my fridge um Oh, so fresh and so delicious. And this will keep you for a couple of weeks um, in your fridge just like this. And then you can pull it out and, you know, you could um, use it for all kinds of things. You could make a spiced nut with these. You could um, throw it into something that you're baking. Um, all kinds of fun ways that you could, you could saute up some veggies with that um, and throw it into a wrap. So all kinds of fun ways you can continue to use that spice mix. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna make the salad dressing with this. And it's a really simple dressing. Um, we're just adding it to um, a bit of uh, red wine vinegar. I actually also think that an apple cider vinegar would make this recipe really pop as well because again, it would go so great with that plum or pluot. Um, and some, some canola oil and this um, spice seasoning and then a, a whole grain mustard. So you want the kind that has the big I'll, I'll get a spoon of this so that you can see it. Um, it's basically got more of that mustard seed and they're, they're nice and whole. I, I like to use these whole grain uh, kinds of mustard in this type of a dressing for this particular recipe. So you'll put all of those plus a big spoonful of that spice mix. You'll put it all into a jar and then shimmy shake. Shakey, shakey, shake. And then I actually like to, I put, I did this overnight because you've got so many of those flavors and you just want them to soak in and marinate into that dressing overnight. So 
Um, so then we have our dressing and then I've got this huge thing I made extra so that I can grab it and make this recipe anytime because um, when I made this my husband and I were so excited we had it for dinner um, and we keep making it because it's it's so good so um, back to the actual spice plum or spice corn um, plum prana salad we're gonna take uh, corn that I've grilled you've seen us do this we just throw it on the stovetop while it's um, freshly husked and and then I just do this on my cutting board you can also do it into your bowl but it's a really easy way to just quickly give your corn a bit of flavor and cook it so um, we got all of these ingredients from the Oak Park Farmers Market and you know right now in California all of this stuff is growing and it's so beautiful right now so a great time to find tons of fresh ingredients and and this salad will use a lot of them up so that is how I like to get my corn off the cob it's so fast so easy and you could also do it right in your bowl if you want that way you don't even have to scrape it off your cutting board and um so what I was teaching my husband to do this uh, so you could use this technique with your kids too um, I actually would have him cut the ear of corn in half and then do it because then you've got a flat surface to work from so that might be easier for kids who are just beginning to learn their knife skills I'll show you what that looks like so that would be me just twist and cut twist and cut twist and cut and then boom so then you've got two flat edges and so for kids that's a little more stable um, and then they're a little less likely to have any any nice slipping and a little, little more stable for kids. So I'm going to use three ears of corn in this recipe um, and you don't have to char yours as much as I did, uh, just totally depends on how you like your corn. So. And if you've ever cooked one of our recipes before, you know that you will be chopping quite a bit. You get your, your knife skills practice in with us because we like to use a lot of fresh fruits and vegetables. And if you're using fruits and vegetables, you're going to be chopping a lot. <laughs> so I find it very cathartic to just stand quietly at my cutting board at the end of a day and chop things. So we're going to put three ears of corn and then... <laughs> I always like to make my food spicy uh, and a chutney would have that spice in there so um, this is another good element so I think I've shown this before but I'll do it again I like to cut off the stem top of my jalapeno and I bite into it oh yeah good this one is spicy because I so often you can't tell the spice level sometimes you get a hot one sometimes you get one with like no heat at all and you you don't know how many jalapenos to put in your dish and, and this one's hot uh, unless you actually taste it first so um, so that's what I just did and then if you have a tiny spoon you could just cut your pepper in half you might want to wear gloves because um, sometimes it the spiciness hurts people's hands I'm apparently immune uh, and then you can take a tiny spoon to sort of get the um, the membrane and the seed part out or you can use your hand but if it's if it's hot and you use your hand um, and you are sensitive you will end up like making your fingers hurt from the heat of the pepper so if you use this technique with the spoon you don't have to worry about that so then we're gonna just use our tunnel and I'm gonna use my claw and just chop this up into nice tiny bits so again depending on the heat level you are looking for you'll use more or less jalapeno what do you think I'm gonna go for you know I'm gonna use two more I like it hot so once I've determined the heat level another way I like to chop the jalapeno is to hold it at the stem end so that I can hold it stable and then hopefully you can see and then I just chop like this so that then I can get nice pretty discs if, if you like your 
you know, if I'm like topping nachos or something like that, or a taco, um, I like it like this. But that also leaves the seeds and the membrane inside, uh, which can also make your pepper hotter. So do keep that in mind. And then you could also just, you know, smash them all up and make them into small bites in case you don't want to end up with a giant mouthful of heat. Depends again on if you want that. If you want that, leave them in bigger chunks. If you only want a little bit of heat in each bite, then chop them smaller. I'm all about that heat, so my third jalapeno is going in. What kind of pepper is a nosy pepper? A hot pepper, cause he's jalapeno business. I'll be here all day, ladies and gentlemen. All right, and you'll notice I'm scraping with the back of my knife and not the blade of my knife. That would make my knife very dull if I was scraping with my blade. I always flip it over if I'm scraping and use the back side. This side is, the blade side is only for chopping. You don't wanna make that dull by scraping it across your cutting board. All right, next ingredient is a small red onion. So we have a big onion, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut that guy in half. That would be a lot of onion, but if you love a lot of onion, then feel free to use the whole thing. Um, I'm making some, you know, flat edges again. It makes it easier for chopping. I'm going to take that outside skin off. And I don't need a lot. Uh, whoops. Keep him together. Makes it easier. All right. Keep the flat sides down. I'm going to use my tunnel. rough chopping these and that's the thing about this too maybe you don't have super amazing knife skills and um, that's totally fine because this is a rustic recipe I like to make all things rustic because um, again it's more forgiving uh, doesn't matter if you're cutting them you know in one inch pieces or a tiny mince because it's all about what size you want in your mouth and every time I cook with somebody they'll say how do you want me to cut this? Like what size should I cut this? And I always say, what do you want that to feel like in your mouth when you bite it? How would you like it to taste? And the same thing with quantity, right? How much of that do you want throughout this dish? Uh, you should totally customize recipes for what is your favorite way to eat it. And I think it takes sometimes the pressure out of cooking that that there is no right or wrong way. The, the right way is the way that is your favorite way to do it. That is, that is the joy of cooking. Um, it's not about anybody else's way. All right, so now we are getting to um, the heirloom tomato. So beautiful in Sacramento right now. Uh, Sacra tomato, uh, as we like to call our, our city because we grow the best tomatoes because we have amazing heat. Tomatoes love heat. And this farmer did an amazing job. One way you can tell a great tomato, um, when you're cutting into it, my board is not covered in liquid right now. There's some, you want a juicy tomato, you don't want a super dry tomato, but you also don't want one that's mostly water. And sometimes um, farmers who don't care about the flavor uh, but care about the pounds might wa overwater them so that they are heavy, but that doesn't make for a delicious tomato. So you want to look for farmers that are um, growing them a little drier, like these. Uh, this is a, a perfect type of tomato because this one has put all of its energy into the flesh of its skin, and it's just going to have... It's gonna be packed with flavor as you're eating it. All right. So um, you could also use cherry tomatoes in this recipe, um, but use a good quality, high quality tomato. But cherry tomatoes are equally delicious. In fact, I think on the recipe photo, we have some cherry tomatoes because that's what I had in my garden at the time I made this. Um, then now we get to the plum. So these are actually pluots. I grow them, I have a tree in my yard, a, a pluot tree, 
These are dapple dandies and you can see that they are actually closer to pink than purple and they're a mix between an apricot and a plum and they were developed here in California by a farmer who used a tweezer to pollinate, hand pollinate his trees while he was trying to produce this fruit because he wanted that perfect combination of plum and apricot, which are already two perfect fruits. How do you even improve upon that? Well, the pluot uh, is, is the, the improvement. Um, and so it's got about a quarter of an apricot and it's got three quarters plum. And so it's got a little less tartness than a plum um, and it's not quite as sweet as an apricot and it's really just the perfect fruit. Um, I've had no bad pluots. Some pluots are um, kind of a purplish green color. Some are sort of a yellowish pink color. So they, the different varieties come in different colors. So they're a lot of fun and I know the recipe calls for one and I just put in two, but guess what? Um, I have a lot of pluots and I love them. So uh, two are going in. <laughs> if you want three, put in three. If you want half, put in half, right? That is how we cook here at Food Literacy Center. It's all about what makes you happy. All right. Now we are going to mix everything up with our salad dressing. Let me get my cutting board out of the way here so you can see my dish. So we're also going to add some pumpkin seeds um, and we do that just for a little bit of texture. Uh, I like that, you know, sort of meaty, chewy feel that a, a nut or in this case a seed has. So, so these are pumpkin seeds and you can just buy them in bulk usually at the regular grocery store. Um, some people will like save a pumpkin and cook them and all that. We bought these. So uh, we're going to use about a quarter cup of those. And then that same quarter cup is what we're going to use for our dressing. Oh, the smells. You can smell that caramely fenugreek and that, and that licorice fennel and that spicy ginger and clove. Oh, so I'm going to use a quarter cup of this dressing that, again, I, I used, um, I let it sit overnight so it can really get packed with flavor. And then we just mix it. Oh, can you see all of the beautiful bright colors? This is, this is summer and fall in California, you guys. This is amazing. And one of our staff members actually grew some of the peppers that you see on the table here. She grew all of these. There's some Jimmy Nardellos in there, some bird's eye chilies. She's an amazing gardener. And that's her passion. So people here at Food Literacy Center, we like to eat. <laughs> all right, so let me dish this up so you can see it a little bit better. I've got so many gorgeous colors. You can smell it across the room. All right. Let me give you guys a close up of that. I'm going in. Make sure I got a pluot in, that, in my bite. Mmm. Mmm. So many flavors, you guys. It is. It tastes like fall spices in your fresh summer salad is, is kind of how I can best describe this recipe. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please go to foodliteracycenter.org slash recipes and you can download all of these and other amazing dishes. And you can also go to our donate button and make sure that um, recipes like these are available for families in our community. Uh, and please make sure on Saturdays that you visit the Oak Park Farmers Market. We love those guys and you can get all of this beautiful food right there for such a great price. Happy Food Literacy Month and enjoy your salad!